after this date, as can be seen in the case of the Greek city of Palmyra, where they worship the sun god named Moloch Bel as late as 500 AD. And after 500 AD, we start to see that stuff disappear. Those worship of a lot of deities, which we know, uh, Constantine, we know a lot of the uh, papacies and all of them went in and just, you know, as it talked about in the Bible, went in and ripped out all the idols, all the worship, all the old stuff they was worshiping in all these different countries, you know, they got rid of, they wiped out. So this stuff couldn't be traced back because they were stealing it. Plain and simple. They were stealing the stories. They were stealing it. And, and it's in the Bible. Stuff is in there. And it says, even when you look it up, West Semitic sun god and messenger god worshipped primarily in the ancient Syrian city of Palmyra. Now, again, you go back to uh, ancient history. Talked about this before. Remember, who was that who set up the whole uh, Syrian empire? Set up, who found Syria? You know, we talked about this before. Remember, this goes back to the Diodoki with the uh, with Antiochus and everything. Them going into Antioch and going into Syria and basically establishing that place. Again, these are Greeks. This is what the stuff go back go back to. You got to understand when, when you're doing the research and you look and you start seeing Antioch or Syria, Greeks. Anytime before the fourth century BCE in, the, in that area being established, it's talking about Greeks. Primarily in the ancient Syrian city of Palmyra, he was variously identified by the Greeks with Zeus and with Hermes and by the Romans with Sol, which we know as Sun. His name may have been of Babylonian origin, and he was considered the equivalent of the Babylonian sun god Shamash. Engravings on the four sides of a marble altar in Palmyra depicts the four annual stages in the life of Malak Bel, symbolizing the yearly sequence of the sun. Most other representations portray Malak Bel uh, with uh, Aglabal, the moon god. Now, also here is giving us the comparison Bel and Baal, and the Baal of the Baalabek was without doubt the same sun god. Malak Bel, identical with him, were the fiery deities of Melakorf of the Tyr Tyrians and of Baal Molech of the Amorites, worshipped by the Israelites, uh, Jeremiah 32, 35. You know, it's so many references we can give when talking about uh, Malak Bel and about Baal and all that. Seen it in the Bible. Again, when you start getting into this stuff, you see where it came from. And the history of it, which is why history is important, because when you start to first find this stuff, it's always pertaining to the Greeks, plain and simple. So it all fits, as I said, as us seeing where the stuff came from, who gave it to us. The reason why Ptolemy the second Philadelphius end up, you know, the whole Septuagint story, LXX, you know, going through the Greeks is, you know, come on, whoever smelt it, dealt it, plain and simple. It's because the Greeks was the one who gave it to us. It's just that simple. It's easy to see when you start, uh, going through the history. So the fact that they put that in there to me in uh, Leviticus to relate it to human sacrifice and the sacrifices that was going on back then is them telling you straight up who these people is. It's the Greeks. So now I talked about before about the whole relation with Minerva and Moloch. A lot of people see the owl at Bohemian Grove and they call it Moloch. And a lot of people know that owl to be dealing with Minerva and a lot of people know Moloch to be, you know, the bull that was basically you know, sacrificing the kids or what have you. But the thing is, it's one and the same when you really understand. We know the whole uh, Minerva, again, dealing with the Greeks. Minerva would be, she's the patron saint of uh, Greek fraternities. Delta uh, Sigma Theta is one of the sororities that has as the patron saint. You've seen her in the logo. They even have a Minerva circle in a uh, fraternity, in a sorority. So we see this stuff, you know, again, dealing with the Greeks. All this stuff is going back to the Greeks. This stuff ain't, you know, they don't put the stuff there for no reason. They know what this stuff is going to go back to. At this point, they don't care, you know. But when you start for for research sake, it's easy to see. Trace it all the way back to the uh, to the Greeks. They're the ones who gave it to us in the first place. But we can look at Moloch and we look at this worship and everything. We know where this stuff comes from. We know what comes from Kemet, plain and simple. It comes from Apis, plain and simple. Now, I showed you when I went to uh, the whole Cairo Museum in Egypt, uh, the whole statue of Serapis. Everybody knew about Serapis, and we know it, they got it from Apis, the bull. And we know the whole worship of Moloch uh, and going back and dealing with the Greeks is just them. It's Apis. That's where they get it from. That's what they do. So when you read history of worship, it's for Apis. Skip down here. It says ceremonial burials of bulls indicate that ritual sacrifice was part of the worship of the early cow deities Hathor and Baat. And a bull might represent her offspring. 
a king who became a deity after death. Now, let me get into this real quick because I don't want to leave you guys out there hanging. So, I talked about this before, I believe. But you may have ran across some Hebrews that's talking about uh, Dr. King being in the Bible. And this is where they draw that from. So, when you understand about Molech, and you understand it's talking about a king here. Now, MLK means king when you, when you get into this whole thing. And I'll show you here. So, MLK means king. So a lot of people draw the MLK king from the uh, the name of Moloch and, you know, the bull, which represents a ritual sacrifice. And, you know, so MLK, you have king. We got Dr. Martin Luther King who, you know, ritual sacrifice the whole nine. This is where they get it from. So if you ever come across a Hebrew that's talking about this, this is where they get it from just to not leave you hanging. Uh, this is where they'll say, well, Dr. King is in the Bible, but we know how they write things and it's easy for you to uh, make this stuff come true when you understand what's already there. And again, one of the reasons why they probably got the whole statue, no doubt King was a sacrifice. We all know, we all know that and he was a patsy. He was used to, you know, as I talked about, but um, yeah, this this is what they're talking about. If you ever heard them getting into the whole MLK thing in the Bible, but boy, well, my represent her offspring, a king who became a deity after death. He was entitled to renewal of life of the Memphite deity Ptah, but after death, he became. Now, this is just an abbreviation for basically Osiris Apis, which I talked about. Uh, just as their humans were assimilated to Osiris, the ruler of the underworld, the Osiris Apis was identified with Serapis of the late Hellenistic period and may well be identical with him, creating parallels to their own religious beliefs. Ancient Greek writers identify Apis as an incarnation of Osiris, ignoring the connection with Ptah. During the start of the Hellenistic period, Ptolemy Soter, who ruled for the period of 323 to 283 BCE, move the core locum of worship of the apis from memphis to alexandria no matter how much digging you do you're gonna keep running into these greeks in this book plain and simple and the fact that when, when you start tying this stuff in and this leads you to the ptolemies i mean come on it's enough said right there but we know you know moloch apis and uh you know uh, apis basically representing being sacrificed and reborn plain and simple so i mean it all fits there Understand the children's sacrifice and it representing being sacrificed and reborn. So, again, you know, we're going to find us a lot of things going back to the Greeks. And I'm going to touch on, you know, every single time. Now, also, we got to remember that uh, Kronos is associated with Moloch. So this is why we see Moloch dealing with child sacrifice. And you see the whole image of Kronos eating babies. This whole thing goes together. It's the same type of thing. Whole thing goes in with uh, Greek mythology. Kronos and a sacrifice, eating babies. And as I pointed out, and as we know, when you're reading in Leviticus, when you're reading in the Bible, it's talking about the Hebrews eating their babies. And I touched on this. As a matter of fact, I mean, like one of the things is just crazy. I don't care what sin you break, what commandment you broke or what you did. It's supposed to be God. I mean, for anybody that got a brain, it's supposed to be God, you know, for these Christians or what have you that believe this stuff. God, who's supposed to create it, your soul and your body that would allow a woman, allow you to, you know, get pregnant and carry a child for nine months only, you know, for that child to be born and eaten by his parents. What kind of shit is that? These people crazy. So it's talking about here uh, Leviticus, just 26, chapter 26, 27 through 30. Marie here. And if you will not for all this hearken unto me, but walk contrary unto me. Then I will walk contrary unto you also in theory. And I, even I, will chastise you seven times for your sins. And ye shall eat the flesh of your sons and the flesh of your daughters. Ye shall eat. And I will destroy your high places and cut down your images and cast your carcasses upon the carcasses of your idols. And my soul shall abhor you. God damn. <laughs> it's crazy, you know. It's crazy when you get into it and you start reading it. And this is the part of a lot. One of the parts of the Bible that a lot of people just don't read and don't see. I always tell people, yo, it's so much crazy stuff in this book that's supposed to be from this rational God. I think if any Christian actually read the Bible, they would run. They'd walk away from it like, get the fuck out. I'm not. This can't be right. And um, 
And this is why a lot of people go into the whole corrupt Bible thing, because, you know, verses like that and stuff like that just just don't make no sense. And a lot of people choose to remain blind to it and delusional and just go with the whole thing as well as God. He can do whatever he want, you know, even when it's stupid and it don't make sense, even when it's evil and cruel and nasty. So, you know, it's in there. So now when you start looking at the whole thing, recapping, uh, you can see, I mean, it's just basically giving us history and, you know, for time's sake, it's a lot of stuff, you know, I didn't want to really elaborate on too much and get into, uh, which we'll come back and touch on as it, you know, as it's necessary. But, you know, from Genesis, giving us the creation of the soul and the spirit, what have you, and the understanding about how the white race was basically infiltrating us and taking over. Same thing we understand with Exodus, with uh, the fall of Kemet. It's basically giving us that metaphorically, even though in the Bible, when the Jews left, if you pertain it to real history, you know, the Egyptians was fine. But it's really alluding to them screwing them over. Then, you know, that's when the rise of the Europeans basically begins. And they disguise that with the Hebrew Israelites and them basically saying that God has given them the power to help to help them fight all these battles or wipe all these people out. But we know it's the Greeks and the whole Hellenization going on and them basically going through our territories and conquering and killing our people and destroying all of our history and everything that we had gone wiped out. That's basically what it's really saying. You have them with the exodus establishing this whole church falsity which basically is them basically saying okay that happened then we established judaism we indoctrinated people and established judaism is basically what they're saying when it's talking about them setting up the church and and them setting up the church what they really was doing was basically hiding uh the rituals teaching the people who need to be te- uh taught certain things and how to use um you know certain sacrifices. So they've basically been using these sacrifices from that point in time to grow in power and to get to uh, certain positions, you know, which leads us up into, you know, basically now with the human sacrifice uh, after Jesus come. But we ain't that far yet, but just saying we know that's that's what it's about. You know, quick recap, you know, and, and you can see, you know, when it's getting into the sacrifice thing now that it's touching back on what they was doing. It all pertains to them anyway, no matter how you slice it. Now, and I talked about this before, like even when I was showing you guys the whole uh, uh, commercial with Matthew McConaughey, when he says, you know, that's Osiris talking about the ball in the street. I mean, every it's everywhere. You're not going to escape it. It's everywhere. The ball down in Wall Street. <clears throat> the fact that it's symbolically everywhere you look, you find the stuff. And uh. All the sacrifices we've been seeing going on and, um, you know, it's all ritual sacrifices, what they've been, what they've been using, as I said, in voodoo to uh, gain control and to continue doing what they have been doing for hundreds of years. And um, so early in the Bible, Leviticus, we can put all that together. So it's a lot more that's really going to, you know, make this stuff stick and get you to understand a lot more stuff as we go. And it's a lot of stuff you'll find as you start digging into this stuff and connecting those dots. And again, knowing history is important and understanding that don't go by what they're telling you. And I always say this before, are we just going to go by what the books say or just go by what they're saying or what everybody else saying? What's the point of doing the research? What's the point of looking if we just going to follow what these people are saying? We got to look deeper. I always say if it don't fit, question it, look deeper. Because a lot of times stuff is put there not to fit. You just got to figure out where it really does fit. And, um, and, and you know, get clarity on it before you just accept it as fact. And I don't really like accepting anything. To tell you the truth, all this shit is up in the air to me. I always tell people everything that I teach and everything go uh, research for yourself and go look in. Make sure you got clarity when it's said and done and that you really understand and get it. Sometimes you might have to watch my videos twice, but I want you to be clear and get this. I mean, to me so far to this point, it's clear as day. You know, I know because I know, you know, but for you guys, you may be still on the fence a little bit, but like I said, if you've been watching everything, you should be cool. So now, as I said, they evolved from sacrificing animals to sacrificing us, plain and simple, to basically dawn what we see these uh, voodoo priests do. And coincidentally, well, not coincidentally, uh, Leviticus translates to the law of the priests. And one of the things you got to look at is that word, you know, priest, you know, just that word. We know. It wasn't no 
Catholic Church es established during this point in time, the only people that would equate to a name or a title like priest is not practicing any kind of Judaism bullcrap, but exactly what they're telling us in Leviticus, which would be ritual sacrifice animals, voodoo, so to speak. However you want to pronounce it, whatever they called it back then, it's giving you that hint right there when it's telling you priest. You know, look up the word and the etymology. All this stuff is going to start going back to Greek, plain and simple. That's what it's going to go back to. And this is what they're trying to tell you. They're giving you the hints. They're giving you what you need to know. You just got to know how to pull it out and, and fit it to where it's supposed to go. So they got to look at it and see how deep this stuff is. So you have, for this long period of time, as I said, you got these Jews who have incorporated this ancient ritual into their, their daily life, their practice, and understanding universal law and using this stuff to gain power and grow in power. They know what it's going back to, and they, they're using it to go back to what it's supposed to go back to. But the thing is, they have now convinced billions of people around the world. I mean, think about this. Billions of people. We have grown up to when we get our food, when the food is on the table, what we do, we pray. We pray to who? God. Plain and simple. Who is God? Who's the powers that be? So that whole setup of that ritual is going back to them. So while you got these billions of people praying, that energy is going back to them in the first place. All these people holding hands and bowing their heads, their heads praying to these damn Greeks, praying to these Jews, plain and simple. And God, we trust them, nobody else. And people coming together and it's just like the sacrifice of the animal. Animal has been sacrificed and now it's being prayed over by people giving the energy away, you know, to the system. To the powers that be. Billions of people all over. Probably right now as we're speaking. So they, they get it. They understand it. This stuff is not done for a reason. We've been we've been trained. They they were they smart. They know what they're doing. They know how this stuff works. And to us, it's, you know, I don't know if I pray or not, so what? It's simple, stupid stuff to us because we don't understand energy. To us, it's nothing. A lot of people are still not going to really grasp what that means and understand why well, Hove wants you to put that whole Rockefeller diamond up. You know, why people want you to sing these songs and why they want you to attach your energy to certain things. Why this whole music industry is out there. They get it. TV, all this stuff, us giving our energy to certain things. And a lot of it is having us on the outside of universal law and open to sacrifice and open to a bunch of bullshit because we not in tune. We're out of tune like a motherfucker. We're not doing things right. And that's the thing. And it's one of the things that, uh, you know, a lot of scholars touched on a lot of people who really understand energy, understand how out of sync we are and how we lend our energy to just so much garbage. It's, it's crazy. It's a lot to understand. It's a lot to learn. So now, as I said in uh, Exodus, you know, with the whole with the Egyptians understanding one, the Egyptians was basically neutral. They had no aspirations of global domination, anything like that. These was truly spiritual people who had power who understood what they was doing. And you got to realize, as I said, the Greeks seeing its power, understanding that, you know, it's a lot they can do with it. You know, and once they got their hands on it, they used their understanding of energy to basically begin to take over. Plain and simple. So again, as I talked about in Exodus, them basically having to, you know, bring forth some Hebrews, <laughs> You know, they they need to produce these people at some point. You got to get the Africans out of here. We got to get these uh, Israelites created. And as I said, you know, it's 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 a lot. You know, when you when you really think about that, what has to go into that? I mean, even when you just think about them having to really get these uh, Arabs on board with coming into Greece, but it's easy when you understand. So we know who are the Arabs. What are the Arabs? Now, I talked about this before in Buddhism, how you had the Aryans come down into uh, the Indus Valley. So the Indus Valley, when you understand it, you have Indians, that all that area was Indian people all in that area, which is why we find Buddha. Uh, you find him in Afghanistan. Remember, they blew up the big uh, Buddha statue in Afghanistan. This is where Indians was, where Buddhism began, of course. And um, you have the Aryans come down. And basically mix in with the people that in this valley and with the Indians to give us 
to give us the Arabs. Plain and simple. And that's all they are. That's all they are. You have white people mixing in with Indians to give us the Arab race. They created and brought into um, Israel to begin this whole deception. Plain and simple. So when we look around, I mean, steep. You look around the world and we see all the places that they infiltrated and it's easy to see because the people got brighter. So even when you go into the whole Indus Valley, you have the creation of the Arabs who look how they look. They are light. And since, you know, the Indians are from Africa, it's melanin, it's melanin in them, but still, you know, they grow lighter because of the, um, the whole bombardment of the Aryans. Uh, who completely, you know, created a whole other race of people, you know, from that. And they worked their way over, you know, to Thailand, Laos, Cambodia, uh, China, Japan. And of course, we'll eventually get over into uh, 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 the Aborigines over there in Australia and in New Zealand or what have you. They went all the way across and infiltrated all the way in. I mean, you can't go to any continent and not find them. So we had later when... The uh, Spain was taken over, taken away from the Moors, as I talked about, the Romans coming in there and you have, you know, the Latin. A lot of people just they, they never put that together. Remember, you had the whole slave trade, the whole slave trade. You have the Spain, the Spaniards coming down into South America, mixing in with those people who were basically Africans or Aborigines down in South America, and then you had the Spaniards coming down, mixing in with them uh, to give us, you know, the Portuguese and uh, Spaniard, which is basically, you know, Romans coming down into South America to give us the Dominicans and the Puerto Ricans, plain and simple. They don't even know who they are. Mixing in with those people because of the slave trade and because of the, uh, you know, just the trade, the whole uh, commodities trade or what have you, whatever they was trading, whatever is going on there to get. They was mixing in with those people, and that's where you get your uh, Dominicans and Puerto Ricans, plain and simple. And um, it's a, a global, you know, just a whitening. And we see this mix, them mixing in with everybody to create opposition to us, the original man, and to confuse, plain and simple. And, and they basically are at the forefront of these races of people. And again, it's one of those things where you got to look at the Chinese, you got to look at the Japanese and look at these different races and, and say, what is it? You know, so when the Bible is talking about God, they being God, God's chosen people. And we understand that God is basically the powers that be. You know, what is it talking about? It's something that they know, because at some point, as I said, these people all came together and agreed to wipe us out of history, even in their own countries. They came together and agreed to screw us. Plain and simple. We see the cover up. Now, as time passed, and you know, it really don't matter no more. They already got their foot in there, already accomplished so much. So they don't care what history is leaked out, you know. But we see, as I said, when I went to uh, Thailand, I had to go into the museum to see the black faces and everything like that. But when you go into the ruins, it's there. They left their ruins. And when you go and look at some of these ruins, it's like, why they leave? It's amazing there. They left this stuff because they don't want the people understanding their history, understanding that they come from blackness, from darkness. So that was one of the things that they decreed that these ruins is going to be tourist attractions. Y'all get out of there, get these people moved somewhere else so they don't understand where they came from and understand the history that they were dark skinned. And we see all the statues and everything start turning white. And it's an agreement, as I said, that they had to basically whitewash history and they all in on it for whatever reason. So it's like, who is this power? What was controlling this white race? What are they? Who are they? That they could have uh, the ages and everybody in agreement to basically allow, you know, these white people to run everything. To take over. That's deep. Something to think about. I don't think people understand how, you know, deep this stuff goes. And one of the things is if you're going to have a goal, if you want to take over North Africa, you know, you have to, you know, one of the, the lands you have to take is exactly what they took. I mean, you want Italy, you want Greece, Turkey, you know, you want Spain, you want to be right there. You can keep your eye on North Africa, Kemet, all that stuff is like right there. But then you got to look at the entire area, which, you know, we call Europe. And I don't think people understand all of this is white. 
plain and simple. You look at these Serbians, the Serbs and everybody, everybody in all these Albania and all these other countries or what have you, white. If they didn't speak and you just seen them, you wouldn't know what they was. Plain and simple. So it's a lot of them. So a lot of territory, a lot of land that they took that was ours. And again, when it's going into these lands that's taken in the Bible, we've got to understand that these lands, of course, was occupied by African people. The the whole the whole system there is is just like the East Coast. I mean, you have a winter, you have summer, you know. That's how it is. So winter and summer. Same thing up in Sweden. A lot of people say, hey, it's cold up there in Sweden. Uh, in South Sweden, where I live at, it's just like Philly. It's the same. It has a winter. It has a summer. Plain and simple. And it don't get much snow in the south. The north is where it gets mostly snow. So even that far north where you go any more north from North Sweden, you're in the North Pole. You know, that far north, you get a lot of snow. But even still, they have a summer. And I showed you guys, if you follow me on uh, Instagram, I showed you guys where it's 24 hour sun from the end of uh, June to like the end of August, where it's sun is out all day, 24 hours. It acts like it's going to go down and it, go, it comes back up. So it's always sun. So, you know, th these lands, you know, this stuff. And it's, it's almost as if, you know, when you get into Genesis, it's talking about. You know, almost as if it's telling us these people have been made. You know, these people have just come out of nowhere and just start taking over. And you got to look at this and understand. So I talked about before on the videos on YouTube, how they come from us. And I talked about, you know, the whole genome sequencing and how we could just look at ourselves and see that. And of course, we got some damn chimpanzees, some ape DNA in us. You know, some we got to share genes with them. There's no doubt about that. So... On that same sense, I haven't seen a monkey evolve into a man. I have not seen it. So we know somebody had to do something, some kind of spices, some kind of genetic experimentation to create us with those genes that we have from monkeys and platypuses and possums and everything like that. That is a fucking experiment right there. So on the same token, we got to look at it. And understand that something was done to us for this mutation to occur. Now, we can't say the same thing and say we don't see black people turning into white people because we see it. We've seen black people have white folks, so we can't say. But something is done for that to happen that for, you know, millions of years, nothing but black. Then all of a sudden, we we basically give birth to our enemy. And, um, oh, this is deep. We're going to get into this down the line where that all fits because this is crazy. It's too much to get into right now. But, again, we can trace this back. We can start getting into Leviticus. But it's not so much we need to really dig into Leviticus. It's the same thing with Exodus. Exodus giving us the law. Yada, yada, yada. Leviticus. When you go through it, if you have read it, I bullshit you not. Get your Bible. It's just talking about if you do this, sacrifice that. Blood here, splattered air. Aaron, Moses, telecongregation. It's not too much we need to really get into as far as just reading through it, which you can do yourself. But in understanding what this stuff is pertaining to as far as what they used, what they was using on their rise to power, uh, which is the sacrifices and energy and uh, being in accordance with uh, universal law. You know, so to me, you know, in looking at it and understanding uh, what's going on, it's alarming when you uh, look at history, look at what's going on. As I talked about before, you know, with these African countries having, you know, presidents and constitutions anytime you see that anywhere in the world it's a part of the system you know it's dug in so we're seeing this stuff but i mean you just also see the spreading you know all over the world of you know just them taking over white folks everywhere we travel as much as i do when airport is crowded it's mostly white people dominating more than anybody else white people and white people and asians so you see more than anybody else, very few melanated faces. And that's deep. That's crazy. And if, if you watch HGTV, just watch HGTV. They have shows like uh, uh, Bahama Life and Island Life, stuff like that. And you just see, you know, every episode almost, white people moving to the Bahamas, moving to the Caribbean. You know, it's crazy. Just moving into these different islands and taking over. And same thing where you have House Hunters International, them moving to different countries all over and just moving and traveling to where they have created a system that leave us, you know, melanated people, black people stuck. 
we can't travel. We can't go and spread out like they are. And that's by design. You know, so when you look at all these different places, I mean, it's, you know, if you white, you can basically seem like they can go anywhere, set up shop. And nobody says nothing. It's like they have this privilege <laughs> to just go and do anything. 